Kevin Cole with you down in the performance space with Strand of Oaks. Welcome. Good to be here. It is great having you here. I mean, first of all, you played our grand opening less than a year ago. Thank you for that. It feels like home. <laughs> it should. Good. That is so great to hear because we want, this is your home and uh, you helped build it too. So. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. So your first official uh, live performance in the performance space. It looks great. <laughs> it fits. <laughs> yeah, it is cool, and it's, it's great having you here. So Stranda Oaks, want to take it away? Yes.
Of Oaks live on the afternoon show. We're just all smiling during uh, Jason's guitar solo there. Uh, <laughs> wow. As it takes off, epic. And uh, two songs from the new album, uh, which is called Hard Love, uh, started off with Taking Acid and Talking to My Brother, ending with uh, Radio Kids. And really nice segue between those two. When you write music, Tim, do you ever think about, uh, you know, how it's going to play out live? This one, yeah. For sure. I, I, I was, it just was our intention from the beginning to have it feel that way on the record. And I just have, throughout the years of experience, I've realized the record is just the birth of the songs. And, you know, it's what people have as a document, but that ability to then take the songs and grow them and grow them for the rest of, you know, for the rest of touring, you know, it's just such a fun thing to do yeah you're not thinking about it like i'm writing a song it's done i'm putting it on an album then we go out and tour it's like these songs are gonna evolve over time yeah and we just we've had i mean the four of us have had so much fun just nerding out really (laughs) of just like set lists and all that very cool tim do you want to introduce the uh the band i'd love to um on drums today is mike steeringer from uh philadelphia pennsylvania and then on the bass guitar is jim reynolds Wonderful Jim. And then to my left, my best friend in the whole world for 13 years. And uh, this is Jason Anderson on the guitar. And uh, again, sounding fantastic. Strand of Oaks here uh, live on the afternoon show. Playing Numos tonight, Dante's in uh, Portland. 
tomorrow, then down to uh, San Francisco at the Independent. Uh, again, the new album is Hard Love. Now, would it be safe to say that the last album, Heal, was kind of more of an introspective album? Yes. I mean, there were certainly rockers on it. Yeah, it was, it was inward-focused and definitely necessary at the time, but I think Hard Love is meant for, to be pushed outwards in a, in a positive way. In a positive way. Yeah, and, and what, uh, what sort of led you to that? I know, like, uh, music definitely inspires you, and you've had a bit of an uh, obsession with uh, Mountain Song by James yes, Addiction. thank you for playing that. That's such a cool lead-in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what, what, what about that? What is it about that song lately that's been... Uh, it's the beat. It's the rhythm section of that song. It's one of, those, it's one of those beats that you could hear for 20, 30 minutes and it's, I call it like endless music. Yeah, the beat and the bass line. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's always, it's, it's so satisfying to that, that, you know, and I feel like it was, you know, that, and it was always the music that was a little bit um, beyond my reach and as far as understanding when I liked it as a teenager, but now it makes so much sense to me. And, but still, I mean, it still sounds like futuristic music. Yeah. No one's touched them yet. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, so, so music's an influence. Obviously, the experiences that you have day to day and on the road or whatnot will shape a record. How did touring with My Morning Jacket have any impact on uh, your focus and thinking? Wow. I mean, that's, I think the, the word support band yeah. is a really nice word because it is the idea of, it's almost like an apprenticeship, I view it. And wow. to see them, I mean, when we did those two nights at the Moor, I, I've never seen a band, and what I learned the most is you should have fully you should treat the show as a sacred thing and not just another night of your life as a as an artist you know and they taught me how to really think about set lists and think about you know like engage in the evening and how the flow goes and i saw them yeah. from night to night you know if it was like kind of like a really chill vibey night they could sense that and that kind of telepathy between the crowd and the band makes for the greatest shows, I, I feel like. Yeah, energy, alchemy, working yes. with, uh, you, you know, transforming that space. I'm sure if, if they sensed it was chill, they didn't necessarily stay there. Exactly. Um, so uh, it, it's interesting um, that you would say, you, you know, I think about My Morning Jacket and Jim James, certainly those shows are transcendent. Uh, all the shows I've seen Strand Oaks do have been the same for me. There's always a point where it takes flight. Yeah, I think, and there, I mean, even when we did the grand opening, it, it felt like, I, I don't remember how many songs we played, but it felt like this, I remember it being this like two hour set and I, you know, it was probably just a few songs, but I think it's just. I think it was a guitar solo maybe during JM. Yeah, yeah, we played that for about 20. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we have four songs, but we might play for 40 minutes because one of them is 25 minutes long, but it was, wow, that was. And that felt like a culmination of a lot of shows, and it was just beautiful then. Yeah, so, so, um, so then what, what uh, sort of triggered the shift to more of an outward record or songs? I think my, my whole spirit and person was demanding it. <laughs> yeah. Because it, 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 it gets pretty... It's already being a band and an artist is pretty narcissistic in nature because, you know, you're doing interviews, you're playing shows, and, and, and you get clapped for. So it, all of that just was turned into this downward spiral of, like, I just got really tired of talking about myself mm -hmm. and my own problems, and I wanted to... And what I realized then is when you open yourself up to others, then it's kind of the difference between receiving a gift and giving a gift. It's much more satisfying to, you know, kind of reach out and see what other people are feeling and friends and families and my wife and all of that just was, it, it made me a much healthier, <laughs> healthier person. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly you have to feel that when you play live, right? Yeah. So even though people are appreciating what you're doing, you're, you're providing an, a great experience for everybody there. Yeah, and as for me too, I mean, I the sense of purpose we all have when we're on the road is, it's so, it, it's just it's necessary for me. So, uh, well, let's just talk more about you. <laughs> and uh, how and, are you, and music. Kevin? <laughs> um, so, when we talked about a year ago, I, th I thought we had a conversation like you were saying that the record was pretty much done. But I heard you scrapped it or started over again. Or? Yeah, I I mean, it was just mostly. It wasn't, I had like three weeks between like tours and I just, 
I should have just like stayed Taking home. Taking a vacation. Yeah, and my mind just was work. The gears were spinning so fast that I just ran in and just, you know, couldn't slow down. And, you know, it was a really great, it was a fun effort. But the main thing I realized is I needed to, like I said, reach out more and the collabor collaborative element, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, again, my best friend for half of my life, I finally got Jason to play on, on my, <laughs> I've wanted him to for, you know, for however long. And Jason came down to New York and I, I, I was, I lived in Brooklyn, which was a brand new thing for me, except I never left like the three block radius. So yeah. <laughs> everybody made fun that I made Brooklyn like the smallest city in the, <laughs> like I live here, I go to my studio here. I know I'm in New York, but it was, yeah. And it was just, it was such a nice change of pace for me because Heel was, Heel was kind of me doing everything and you can't really vibe too deeply when you're playing a bass part and then you like, all right, Tim, let's move over <laughs> to the guitar. Let's keep this, you know, feeling going and it's slightly difficult when you're doing it all yourself. Yeah, that totally makes sense if you're multi-tracking a record solo, right? Yeah, and this one we could look at each other and, and people in a room could feel off one another and, you know, it, you we didn't, we didn't want to make like a planned record. Yeah. So um, how did that shape the, uh, not just the recording, but maybe the actual songwriting? The songwriting, I think was, you know, it was fantastic. Like Nicholas uh, Vernays, who produced the record, our first conversation we ever had together was not like shop talk about like what microphones are in it. Because it's a microphone's a mic. But like, he just said like, he just told me, like, I don't want to change what you do. I just want to elevate what you do. And that, I know it's kind of like in the stars kind of talk, but it, it was so, like, inspiring to me. And to how to take, like, what, because I have these two elements that are always fighting of, like, I want to write, like, a, a good song with, like, structure, but I also want to, like, run around in the desert and, you know, like, <laughs> howl just at the moon. <laughs> So it's like, how do these two people live inside my head? And I think he finally figured out that marriage. Yeah, that is super cool. I, I totally get that. I, I, your, your songs and the live performances definitely have that spirit. Yeah, and like even down to the record cover, like I think everything is much more me. You know, I'm just like big smile and wild looking and <laughs> unkept. And like, I think that's just much more because, you know, when we've ever hung out, I'm not like the somber oh no you know at all. like <laughs> you're one of the most effusive guys and enthusiastic guys i know but but i even get that you know songs like jm which are very moving songs uh, and touching and heavy again have a transcendent element. yeah i mean well that's again it's what i tribute. learned i learned it from jason Molina. i mean that guy he never said give up he never said i'm giving up he said try mm -hmm. and he said get through it and you know and that's those are the people that i look up to the most you know the people who persevere and, you know, I, that's, that's all I can do. <laughs> I can't be cynical. Yeah. If you're cynical already in this world, then you're just, it's going to get even worse for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is so true. It is Stranda Oaks live on the afternoon show. Uh, the new album is called Hard Love. We are loving it. And uh, I love that you, <laughs> I love songs about the radio, you know, and uh, Radio Kid and kind of Goshen 97 was yeah. sort of like that uh, a radio theme song or about loving music. Of course. I mean, that's just how I, I can't not write about what I, who I am. And that's what, that's what pulled me out of, that's what pulled me out of like whatever. It brought me magic, you know, and it was, you know, that's Radio Kids is about first hearing Modern Lovers and hearing Jonathan Richmond's voice and it's, you know, I was like 12. And if you hear that voice, it's, it's transcendent. You know, you, you don't understand that music, like, you know, I had like top 40 radio and I hear a college station play Modern Lovers. And play Roadrunner or something. Exactly. I, it was, I'm straight. Oh, Cause cool. Hippie Johnny, I was like, who's Hippie Johnny? This guy, I don't know if I like Hippie Johnny cause <laughs> this guy doesn't like him. And, you know, and that's, that's the kind of, kid I was you know I, I built my own worlds and I had my own like uh, yeah it was just the, yeah, the magic and I heard somebody say that music is a true form of magic and to hear something for the first time ever like but you know imagine like again thinking back like you've never heard this voice before and you hear it for the first time it can never happen again but that's it's perfect when it does yeah it's a remarkable feeling uh, 
I'm going to play some uh, Modern Lovers later on the show. Yeah. It is a Strand of Oaks live on the afternoon show. If you happen to be listening uh, on the radio or online, you can be watching, too. We are doing uh, live video streaming on uh, KXP's Facebook page. Want to uh, take it away? Yes. I'll do the uh, rest of it. Are we going straight in? I forgot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Strand of Oaks, Strand of Oaks, live on the afternoon show. Uh, the new album is called Hard Love. That track uh, is from it. It's called Rest of It. And uh, again, it's here on KEXP Seattle. And uh, tonight the band is playing at Numo's tomorrow night down in Portland. Dante's. I'm doing the golf commentator talk Sounds as you're good. tuning. Sorry. <laughs> That one takes, <laughs> takes the voice and the tuning away. Just a quick little sip from my KXP cup. All right.
Strand of Oaks live on the afternoon show. Man, sounding so good. <laughs> Thanks. Epic sounding. Thank you. I feel like I've been biochemically realigned. <laughs> so do I. I needed that really bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Uh, again, the new record's fantastic. Hard Love. We just heard four songs off it, ending with everything. And again, uh, it's just great to have you here it's always. Good to see you, Kevin, and everybody here. Yeah. And a uh, huge thanks to uh, Jim, Scott, Alia, and uh, Justin on video, Melissa taking photographs, Kevin Suggs on sound, Matt Ogaz running the board, Melissa and Jen helping out behind the scenes, and to all the donors that make in studios here possible. It is the afternoon show, KEXP Seattle. Great job, everyone. <laughs> Woo! Discover great music at kexp.org.